like to tell you today some of the results that we looked at from the fertigation rate studies that we conducted here at the Dr. Pepper Research and Education Center over the past few years. We are looking at different rates of fertigation applied on a weekly basis, twice weekly, at several different rate levels. The amount of fertilizer that was applied was based on 90 feet a row with three rows to apply. The plants are, were planted 12 inches apart and covered in chemical classification compounds. This is uh, 12 weeks after transplanting and then the treatment are treatment one, it doesn't get any fertilizer. Then treatment two, it get um, a half of the recommendation, the UF5 recommendation. The treatment three is just um, the recommendation for the IFAS. Treatment four is 1.5 times that, and treatment five is two times that. The first table talk about the nutrients in the tomato leaf. As we can see for the phosphorus that we are applying 20 to 20, so we are not applying any phosphorus. So when we do the stat, um, we can see that we don't have any difference between the treatments. Then for the nitrogen, we see that the treatment four and five are, um, there is not a difference between them and neither for the two and three. And then for potassium, we can see that treatment one and two, they have no difference and then treatment three, four and five, they have no difference. So as we can see the potassium, you will expect that there will not be different between something that is not getting any fertilizer and something that is getting just a little bit. And then for the treatment three, four, and five, we show here that there is no different if you put more uh, fertilizer than the recommendation from the IFS. Okay. This is in leaves then for stems. We show that for potassium, there is no difference between the treatments. And then for, for nitrogen, treatment three and four, they have no different. And then treatment one and two, they have no different. And uh, five is different between all of them. For the fruit, in potassium also, it doesn't show um, different between them. And then for the, for the phosphorus, we have uh, the treatment one and two, they have no different, and the treatment three and four, they have no different, and five is different between all of them. Figure number one, you can see here, this is the gram of nutrient in tomato stem. You can see that uh, nitrogen, there is no different between treatment one and two, and there is no, um, then for three, four, and five, there is no difference. So we show again that it does, it does not make any difference to put more fertilizer. Uh, this is in the stems. Then for the leaves, we can see that in uh, nitrogen, three, four, and five have no different, and then one and two, they have no different. This is for the fruit, we can see that um, for nitrogen, in the fruit is kind of like different. For treatment one and two, they have no different. But then uh, three, four, and five also, they have no difference. There, but there were significant, significant differences in yield between the IFAS rate and the one and a half IFAS rate. So as some of the work that Monica's, Monica has been doing in the fields with nitrogen and with potassium uh, for tomatoes in South Florida in the fall, the IFAS rate may be a little on the low side, but it still gives you a, a, a uh, yield that's very similar to one, uh, a much higher rate, which in the case of one and a half times, the IFAS recommendation is 200, that's what we were going with, one and a half would be 300, 300 gives you the maximum rate, but somewhere between there is probably where uh, most growers should be, and I think that's exactly what uh, Monica has been showing in her studies. So this, uh, this is demonstrating that, that we can, uh, with wood drip, applying fertilizer at the proper time, we can uh, have a very good uh, effect on the yield. And you'll notice that the yields, the estimated yields here from our plots were, were quite high. 
uh, compared to some of the grower field site uh, fields.